Hello and welcome to AM Guitar with me, Anjo. Today we are looking at the Carl Martin Ampster. So we'll start this off with a massive thank you to Carl Martin for being very patient with me and sending me uh, an Ampster after months and months of me nagging. Now, the reason I nagged them was I was looking into ampless setups. So I joined a band uh, where we're trying to go through the PA for lots of different reasons. So we go through a, we go through a mixing desk, we have lots more control, everyone comes out of the PA. And I've tried a few with varying success. I've tried ones with tubes, ones that were fully digital. And I'd seen some reviews of this, I'd seen what it was about, and I love Carl Martin gear anyway. And I thought it really sounds like something worth trying. And I'm really glad that I did, because what it gives me is, a, is the opportunity to have the same kind of sound at home that I do in the studio and live. So let me explain a little bit. What we have here is a proper tube amp with a 12AX7 um, tube in it, uh, and then kind of a power amp type thing at the back with a cab sim built in. We then have a balance line out, which I'm at the moment going through a Scarlett 2i2 digital interface. In the studio, that goes, this goes straight to the mixing desk. My board goes into the input. And if I wanted to, I could have like a wedge or something. They have a link um, out as well that doesn't have, isn't affected by what's going on on, on, the, um, on the pedal. So, it allows me to record direct, put all my effects through it. It has an effects loop, so I can put reverbs and delays and stuff through it. And it allows me to get a real tube amp response without all the volume, without all the need for kind of carrying an amp around. I can just turn up to a gig with my pedal board and this, and it'll sound the way I want it to. Then while I'm home doing demos like this, I can have this plugged into my interface, put the pedals through it, record direct. So, well, immediately this becomes very practical and very useful to me. What else have we got? So on the front here, you've got master, a presence, bass, middle, treble, and gain. You have a cabinet selector. So you've got a um, four by 12 open backed cab, which is green. And then if I flick to red, that is a two by 12 closed back cab. So essentially a Marshall cab type thing versus a Fender style twin. And we have a mute button as well, which actually is much more useful than I anticipated it being. On the top here, and I'll show you a, a picture of this, like I said, we have this balanced line out. We have a ground lift, which is just incredibly useful. We have our input, our uh, link, which takes you out to another amp if you need to. Send, return, remote, so that you can plug the cabinet selector into a uh, switching system. And we have a voicing, which changes the way the bottom end works, the voicing switch. Really useful. I've been using this for a few weeks. So usually, usually when I get a pedal, I will review it fairly soon after I get it. I've actually been using this with the band for the last few weeks to test it out. because I really wanted to understand how it worked, whether it responded the way I wanted it to, and really, if it was you know good enough to keep on the board. Let's get some tones out of it. So I've got a Boss OD3 back here going into it, which I'll switch on for some overdrive tones. Um, I'm using obviously my Fender Telecaster. I'll have my headphones on so that I'm hearing what I'm recording rather than trying to go through an amp or anything. So it's a bit more realistic. And we'll just go through the settings and I'll just talk you through what I'm pressing, what I'm clicking and, and how it all works. OK, so I'm all set up. I, I'm going to flick it to, well, so I'll keep it on there. So this is, everything is at 12. Just make sure it's not flipping. everything at 12 I've got the voicing switch dead center so I'm going to play around with the controls first we're going to play around with the gain to start with and then we'll try out the um, the EQ I'll try out the voicing and then I will switch to the other cabinet simulator so you can hear what that sounds like 
So if I turn all the gain off, bridge pickup still. Turn it up a little bit. So nice and clean, I start rolling this up. Clean with a bit of sparkle, and then start going past 12. Turn it down a little bit. Starting to hear a little bit of break up. All the way up. We start hearing some natural kind of tube breakup, as you would expect to hear. If I play around with the EQ, so if I let's play with presence first. can hear it just kind of pushes it out of the mix like so in a band setting you'd have that a nice period a nice point where it would just push it outside of the rest of the, the instruments a little bit in that nice crunch as well here uh, if I now roll off the bass all the way Again, exactly what you'd expect, you hear the bass rolling off, not much more I can say about that. Uh, mids, let's turn them all the way down. All the way up. Okay, and then same for treble, all the way off. Again, exactly what you'd expect from a three band EQ with a presence control. Um, what I like about this, so we'll, we'll go on to the different cabs in a second, the other cab in a second. What I like is the fact that you get that natural kind of gentle, almost martially breakup, uh, but it's nothing, it's not overwhelming, it's not got distortion in it, so it's just a natural overdrive that's happening. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flick that back down to kind of midway. I'm going to swap to the Actually, no, we're going to play with the voice settings. So, so I'm going to move it all the way that way. Middle. All the way this way. It's very subtle um, and it's just, it's more useful uh, in the mix because you can hear kind of uh, the bass just being played around a little bit. I tend to have it set in the middle, that just works best the way I'm set up. Um, what we'll do now is let's put some overdrive into it so you can hear it kind of pushed and then we'll do the same sort of stuff with the other cab. now on this. So 
takes pedals really, really well. And it also takes uh, the volume control really well on your guitar. So onto my neck pickup, maxed out the gain on here. So again, responds as you would expect a tube amp to. So let's flick over to the uh, 4x12 version. I'm going to start again, everything around about 12. So I think it sounds a bit more open. So. And just for the sake of completeness, if I push this all the way to the top, so go back to our 2x12. For me, that one just, I don't know, it just has something. That's just my personal preference. So let's just go through the, quickly go through the controls again. They do the same thing, obviously. down to the middle, turn that back up again, and again, we'll just sort of play with some of these. If I pull the bass back. Middle. Presence. Same again. And the voicing, so this is going to be all the way that way. Middle. All the way to me. The biggest change when it's all the way towards me and then into the middle, I think, has the biggest change in, in dynamics there. And then if we throw in our overdrive. So you can hear it there. If you're on the um, the uh, the twig, there's more high end to it. Whereas the uh, four by twelve seems to be a bit more rounded off in the high end.
And there you have it. I mean, there is something to be said about a real tube amp. There is a way it responds. There is a way it compresses. And because this runs through a tube, you get all of that. But you also get the convenience of having everything in one box. I've got my cab simulator and it's very simple. Now I've used ones where the cab sim took me two hours to get what I liked. I have two choices, red or green. I prefer green and it stays on green. I have some voicing choices. I put it in the middle and that's what I prefer. I have a standard EQ. It works like an amp and I can mute it if I need to, which is again, very useful live. The fact that it's got the ground lift actually improves it over some I've tried because they don't have the ground lift, which makes the XLR output useless to, in a lot of cases. It's got the effects loop if you want to use that. You can go straight from that into an amp to give you like a, a monitor or whatever, uh, or a DI, whatever you need to do. So it has lots and lots of kind of simple options that you set and forget, put it on the floor, plug all your stuff into it and just go. My biggest concern about anything with a real tube in it is the heat. So it runs off a 12, uh, sorry, it runs off a nine volt um, power supply, but it needs a one amp nine volt power supply. So I do have a separate power supply for this and the rest of my board. It does run, I think it's like 210 volts or something. It actually r runs the tube app. So you get, you get a real tube sound from it and you get a real response from it. You can actually see it glowing in there. Um, but it doesn't get hot, so I can touch the front plate. I can feel it's warm, but it's not hot, so the thing doesn't overheat. I had one orange, the orange uh, terror stamp that used to overheat, and it was useless to me because after an hour or two it would overheat. This I've, r I've run for four hours solid, no, no breaks, playing all the time, and it hasn't had any problems whatsoever. Because there's sort of no real digital gubbings going on, there's nothing to go wrong, it's just analog, works like an amp, sounds like an amp. The cab sims are absolutely fine for recording and for live use. Uh, you don't need to have clever cab sims and IRs and stuff sometimes. You just need, I want to be able to switch between the two. Do I think being able to switch between the two from the foot switch is useful? For me, no. Might be for some people with certain requirements in their set. I would quite like to have seen maybe a second channel or even just a little volume booster or something would be really nice here. The mute button, like I said, absolutely brilliant because there are times when your rig is just making noise and you want to be able to shut it all down quickly, hit that, you're golden. If you're looking for an ampler setup, so for live use, studio use, recording, for going into digital interfaces and that kind of thing, if you've already got a digital interface, I can't recommend this enough. If you haven't, go and buy a digital interface, then buy this so you can record with it, or just take this to the studio and play with it. It sounds exactly like I wanted a tube amp to sound like in my head. Having tried lots of tube amps, it sounds right. It has the right response. It has the right feel. When people talk about tube amps, they talk about feel more than they talk about tone a lot of the time. And there is this something about the way a tube responds to, to your picking in your dynamics that makes it different to any digital experience usually. You can't hear it, don't get me wrong, no one in, no one on, in the audience is going to hear it, but you feel it. And that know, it just makes you connect better with your instrument and with the amp and everything. So, yeah, absolutely. If you're looking for a direct recording, direct to a PA live type option, you don't want to be lugging around an amp with you. Absolutely 100% recommend this. I think it's about £250 in the UK. It might be, it might be a bit more, but I'll put it in the description. So it's less than an amp, well, less than decent gigging amps, other than maybe the Boss Katanas. Um, heartily recommend it. Again, thank you to Carl Martin. This is going to be used a lot. Um, I will now be using it to record all my pedal demos, and it's going to be going around gigging with me soon, and it's going to get a lot of use and get very battered. So uh, the fact that it's solidly built and we have our little kick guard here and all that kind of stuff, I'm very pleased about this is not around in my gig bag now for the last few weeks and has not shown up any real any real marks that I can see and it's working absolutely fine every time I pull it out of the bag so uh yeah thanks Carl Martin let me know if you've tried other ampler solutions and what you've thought of them 
If I could get a like and a subscribe, I'd be very, very, very grateful. A comment, just so grateful. And um, until next time, I will see you soon. Cheers.